Alrighty, you guys see it. Cletus McFarland's mullet engine, the SMX. I'm gonna tear this thing apart for you so you see exactly what's going on, exactly what we were talking about at Great Lakes uh, Dragway when uh, Garrett decided to stop. Before he actually broke something. That's pretty impressive. So anyways, could tear this thing apart, but first, What I wanted to show you was, you just, uh, here in this next video, you're gonna see Ashley, she's new girl Ashley. She pulled the transmission out of the car. There's the transmission. God darn it, I still have some kind of issue. I went over with you how hot the, uh, exo uh, how hot the oil temperature was coming out of the converter. And it is accurate. <laughs> I'll show you why. Uh, but one of the new things we just did, I thought, man, this car weighs 3,685 pounds with me in it. Uh, I gotta lighten this thing up some, so I got new brakes. No, I'm just kidding. I need to get new brakes because you know that uh, if you watch any of my videos, these last, these last few outings, I had a, let's see, uh, at uh, uh, Byron, at Byron Dragway, super short shutdown, pulled a parachute too late. I was on the brakes hard, glazed and boiled all the fluid out of the front brakes. And I thought, you know what, I got to get more brake on this car anyways, because at the next event, you know, it was kind of dicey and I chicken footed it and lifted a little bit early because it was going fast. And so we put new TBM four piston brakes on this thing. So I'm looking forward to stopping And By the way, it is actually lighter. So that's cool. Let's go over here, look at the converter and I'll give you a quick tech on this converter. Uh, come back and you can see the full video on the transmission removal and uh, talking 100% about the converter. And here is the table of converter, I call it. Now, uh, I'm working with Marty Chance, working with Carl Rossler. This is the converter that came out of the car when it, it got so hot, it turned stainless steel blue-black. That's actually mostly black. That takes about 900 degrees to do that. Point blank, it does. It has to. How is it possible? No freaking idea. I don't know how it's freaking possible. So, we changed some routing. Marty Chance working with me. Uh, awesome guy, wants to make sure everything is perfect. <clears throat> Sends me another converter. Let's try this, we gotta figure this thing out. This converter comes out, I knew that we were 600 degrees, and lo and behold, this is 600 degree temperature color. This was brand new stainless steel. All you gotta do is go back and look at it. This was a brand new converter, shiny stainless steel. It turned this color, it has to be that hot. Um, still slipping like a banshee. I'll go over some of that tune information and show you how bad it was slipping. <clears throat> uh, in the car with data logs, still going 660 and uh, slipping like a freight train, making it to the final round. Uh, we're, we are gonna figure this out and uh, with the help of Carl Rosler, Rosler Transmissions number one, and uh, Marty Chance Converters, Neil Chance Converters, uh, we're gonna figure this deal out. There's something, something's just a little off. And uh, I'm gonna actually tear this converter apart in the video and show you again exactly how everything works, is supposed to work, and maybe if I, there is a very minute chance, very minute chance that I put this converter together wrong. Very minute. <laughs> but anything's possible. We're gonna find out. All right, back to tearing Cletus' apart. I could actually use it, one of the trays. I can grab that up Got a little bit. You gonna hold this there? Yeah. Or, yeah, put that tray in there, it's fine. Yep. I'll hold it still now. I got it.
Aha, it fits perfect. All right, so this, you, you see, all I did is take the pan back off. We pulled the pan off at the track and showed you guys that it was a thrust brain issue. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take off each one of these caps and we'll look at the bearing. And you can see that there's no material in the oil pan fact here it's left. This is exactly the same. So there is, there is no material. There is nothing in here. That might be a little piece of silicone. Uh, pretty much nothing in there whatsoever. If there's a bunch of material from bearings or something, do you think it might be in the oil pan? Okay, now, let's keep on moving on. Uh, we'll have to take the spark plugs out of it so I can get the rollover easy. Alright, so let's take the each rod cap off. Obviously, I can't tear the whole thing apart in this order. Obviously, I gotta take the top half of the engine apart. But I wanted to show you real quick and explain and look at and try to diagnose where that little bit, and when I say a little bit, it was a little bit of material. Almost, almost thought about telling, telling Cletus. Go ahead and let her eat, but usually telling Cletus to let something eat doesn't it doesn't end up all that great sometimes. <laughs> so I figured I was I was really shocked and happy that he was uh, not wanting to just push something and you know not be 100% sure. It's like yeah, that's cool, you know. So we will figure out what's going on here, and I'll show you and let you guys discuss amongst yourselves. What could possibly be going on? All right. That there is a really nice looking bearing. Let me grab this dirty rag here. That looks, that looks really nice. No problem whatsoever. Now, I can go get all involved with pulling the other bearing, but And pull that up a little bit. It's uh, impossible to destroy the bearing here without destroying this bearing. It's all part of the same deal, so you can't do that. I just wanted to put this back together just so when I do tear this part fully, it's easier to just put back together. I'm sorry, easier to take back apart. If I leave everything all apart and all the caps off of it, I gotta put them back on and roll the crankshaft over, so. We are doing a quick visual diagnosis of what is going on with mullet. And we'll go through one by one on bearings if I already do something. Go a little bit faster for you guys. Again, very nice. That's just oil discoloration. Very nice. No problem whatsoever. Very nice. Very nice. And I gotta come up with a better place to put in these here. There you go. Now, Ray, I am gonna, like I said, I am gonna take this thing 100% apart and just do a, a a general inspection. 
freshen up on it, make sure everything's just ready to rock and roll. And if it does end up being what I think it is, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Again, very nice, very nice, crankshaft looks great, always happy to see that, because as you know from other videos, these crankshafts are expensive. Now, the other thing. Uh, very hard to take that bearing off without taking the rollerized thrust bearing assembly off. In fact, it's, uh, in fact it is, well I guess I, I can get the, the cap off. So I, I guess I can get the cap off. Just can't take the rollerized thrust bearing off without taking the front of the motor apart. It's no big deal, it's all going to come apart anyways. But, uh, it is also, if you don't know, a lot of you guys do. The engine oils the mains first. So oil goes to this main bearing and then goes directly up from the main bearing to like this main bearing right here feeds this connecting rod and this connecting rod. This main bearing feeds this connecting rod, this connecting rod. So this feeds number two and number, uh, sorry, no, number three and number four. This one only feeds number one. So if there is a bad bearing, that is right here in the main if it tore the bearing up if it did anything bad where do you think it sends that bearing material to because oil flows from here out to the connecting rods yep very nice very nice you can see that very nice very nice on the crankshaft. Okay. Another very nice bearing. We'll take. All right, another nice looking bearing. Now keep in mind too, these are a uh, Clevite bearing 1512V. If you actually wanna look that up and drive, drive yourself nuts. But a 1512V bearing is a soft bimetal Babbitt bearing. So what that means is uh, it doesn't have a hard uh, a hard laminate coating. So like an H bearing, an H bearing is kind of brownish in color and looks like a, mm, it kind of has like bluing and it, it's just kind of brown and blue and almost looks like my converters. Um, that's the coating that that comes with. These start out with this really soft Babbitt uh, underlayment it's not the right term but there's some real bearing guy out there that can correct me on that um but what this is doing it is it is made to be super soft and it tends to swipe and uh loading will just kind of polish and leaves a polished looking finish on it um this is absolutely nothing looks great uh i i.e normal wear for something that will make 4,000 plus horsepower and actually normal wear for anything. <laughs> Just the harder bearings, like H bearing, a harder bearing won't uh, show that kind of really soft, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of how to say it. Almost think of lead. Think how lead would be like a dull surface finish, but if you pressed on it really hard, it would like 
shine. Well, if you press really hard and with oil, you press really hard through the oil, or not through the oil, with oil, uh, it'll shine that lead up. And with a hard bearing, it just rides through the oil and it's it doesn't doesn't leave any tracking or indicators. And last bearing. There we go. And put it back in the in the bore here. There we go. Yeah, that's that's very nice. Looks very good. No problem whatsoever. So now the last thing to be looking at is because I know that this has more thrust. I did set the clearance up correctly. Twice I've set the clearance up correctly. The last time at Cletus' shop, I actually showed you the video of me checking the clearance and showed you how we do it and how the, the whole process. You wanna see that? Go look at the video. Right here, wherever Nate puts it. Up here. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, you can go check that out. Let's take this, we'll take this oil pan gasket off and I'm going to take this rear main cap off because this has the stock thrust in it. But first, let's go ahead and check our clearance on this thing. We did kind of a rough eyeball uh, check at the track. And I could obviously tell that it was more than seven thousandths, which is, I believe, what I set it up at. I'll turn the indicator around for you so you can see. So you can see that move. Oh boy. Well. That is, that is still seven thousandths. Hmm. Very interesting. All right. That is still seven thousandths. That means our thrust thrust has not changed hmm okay let's see so we know I think we'll still well at this point I think I'll at least take the rear main cap off and take a look at it and see if it came and made any contact with anything but that is actually exactly where it should be but I know when we were doing this at the track, this thing sure did look like it had excessive clearance. Is that still just moving to? Yeah. That thing is like dead nuts perfect. No bearing material in the oil pan. No bearings gone. No bearings even touched or even any type of damage. Uh, and it wasn't, did not look like aluminum material. Hmm. Okay. This is, this is looking really good, actually. Um, seeing as it, as it is set up exactly the way I did it the first time, uh, I'm not even going to waste your time checking that right now. Now I'm hunting around thinking, where could anything else have come from? Everything looks really good through there. Obviously, the key the key thing is um, where is material. So we should be able to see some kind of material somewhere if something's wearing up here there's material up here there's not if something's wearing back here there's usually some material here in the oil pan there's not uh the material goes through the bearings through the main bearing comes up the rod there's not so and it's been running long enough but there's a lot of things that it just it wouldn't be it wouldn't be like break-in stuff um all right let's go and I think we'll, let's flip this over and we're gonna check the uh, 
valve train stuff real quick. And then anything else that, other than that, then we're going to have to just do a full 100% disassembly. But so far, uh, this thing looks like a million dollars. And I, I am kind of starting to think that uh, it might have been, of all things, of all things, think about this, of all things, a overabundance of caution from Cletus McFarland. That's that's something else. Maybe this thing is just an overabundance of caution. Um, all right, let's roll this thing over, and uh, we'll look at the top end of this deal. As you can see here, these are valve lash and direct valve lash directions for for Cletus. as you're looking down inside that lifter or inside that valve cover area this one too let's shine a light of the light of inspection now the one thing you did see us do is you did see me change a valve spring which is I gotta admit that one is really pretty rare I normally don't have any kind of valve, valve spring issues with these these are a, a PSI spring really super high end Pro, uh, pro stock, pro modified type valve spring. And uh, I usually don't have any kind of problem. Now the one thing that you would, again, just rational critical thinking says, if there's a bunch of material right here, ah, there's the culprit. If there is something can't make material, not be destroyed and not leave it somewhere. I mean, it just, it can't, it can't start from up here end up all the way in the oil pan not stay in the oil pan and then just get into the filter so that's not even it's not even rational thought I mean it has to be somewhere else in here and this is looks uh, astronomically clean actually you can look down in the lifter valley it is astronomically clean again anything that definitely in the lifter valley anything that happens in the lifter valley goes immediately downwards towards the oil pan let's look on this side And uh, when the valve spring broke, I went and I changed it for Cletus at the, on the side of the road, actually in the parking lot of the hotel. And uh, yeah, video on that. I didn't video it, but Cletus did. And uh, well, this looks nice. Um, we, you know, there's a couple little pieces right there. We took those out. Everything seemed to have come out. Definitely didn't go through the oil system because it'd have to go through the pump through the oil filter has to go through the oil filter first the so oil filter will stop it catch it if anything did um, but this looks like it looks like brand new so here's something for you guys I'm going to close this video up. There's nothing wrong. But I am still going to take this 100% apart and inspect every single thing to the finite degree just to see if there's anything that's actually changing or moving or doing something funny, which is that's always possible, but there's nothing wrong. Um, Garrett probably should have kept racing. <laughs> But, um, shucks. You know, for abundance of caution. I mean, the, the valves look good. Valve job. Yeah, boy, that stuff looks really, really nice. Um, I'm curious. I'm going to tear this the rest of the way apart. Uh, that or I might have uh, Cody tear this the rest of the way apart. E either way, we're going to tear this the rest of the way apart. And, uh, do a full 100% inspection. If I find anything, I'll tell you. You know I don't hide that kind of crud. I, 
more than happy to tell people what's going on because I want to always find the problem and find issues with anything. Anything I see or anything that's funny, um, you know, I always try to make sure I address all that stuff. But uh, this thing looks like a million bucks. I'm curious, what's your comment? What do you think? Uh, you saw, you'd have to go back to uh, uh, day three of six summer. Yeah, oil pan, or oil pump's fine. Uh, day three of six summer, at least I think it is. Eh, it might be, might be a little tight. But I don't think there's anything wrong with the oil pump. You have to go back to six summer, day three for Cletus McFarlane. Go back, look at that thing, look at the filter. We show it, we talk about the bottom end. I thought it felt like it had a bunch, but we didn't have an indicator there. I made an assumption. Garrett was being overcautious, and uh, I don't think there's anything wrong. But I'm curious what your comments are if you think there's going to be something else I could find in here. Keep in mind, before you make those comments, think your way through it. Nothing in the oil pan. No material there. So how did something get from up here and get into this oil pump without going in the oil pan? Got to think about that. Anyways. I'm Steve Morris. Like, subscribe, follow, whatever. <laughs> Have a great day.